This is the Stick and Hack Show. Conversation, discussion, debate, and golf talk from a stick, Mike Ryan, and the hack, Adam Grubb. Boys, you are up. All right, everybody, welcome in. It is the Stick and Hack Show. I'm your host, Adam Grubb, the hack. That's Mike Ryan, the stick. Mike, welcome in. Hey, buddy. Hey. Uh, welcome look back. At, look at us. Oh, yeah. Look at us out in the public. What a what a an absolute treat it is to, to see you. I haven't seen you in person in I know. months. It's been probably the best couple months of my life. It's been really good. Yeah, it has. Uh, we've got an incredible show here. <laughs> as we're back in the studio at the Stick and Hack Show. Uh, we are th- over 1,300 members proud. Continue uh, to uh, go sign up for a membership, free membership, free for life. The greatest golf club in the world without the course. And this is the most sophisticated golf show in the world. Um, these are all just things we say. None of them right. are proven. You know that, right? Yeah. Uh, episode 25 here. We've got a great guest uh, with us uh, today. His, uh, his name is Noah Polinski, and he is a, uh, an author, and he is a coach, and he is a golfer, and he has uh, an incredible mindset around the game of golf and something he's been training and learning and proving for years. Uh, it is a no-thought game. No thought, no swing thought, just play golf. I feel like it's like the... Uh the fountain of youth, right, or the uh, the holy grail. Well, if, if it if it works, no thoughts. If it works, <laughs> then uh, he's a millionaire, and uh, my game uh, improves drastically. I uh, yeah, I um, hope. No, he is a uh, peaceful golfer. Is his uh, is his website, and we're going to get to him in just a little bit to uh, to hear his story. Uh, but it's it's incredible. Noah yeah. Polisky is uh, the guest peaceful golfer on the show today. Uh, first, though, we want to talk. Uh, first up here, we want to talk about. A, a story, you know, they, they say that, that golf can drive you insane. Um, Mike, do you know who the first American to win the U.S. Open was? Most, most uh, would say, who would most say? The first American to win the U.S. Open? Francis Wiemet. Okay, good, good guess. Bobby Jones, perhaps. Those are the, yeah. the, the two good guesses there. Yeah. Uh, that is inaccurate. Um, the actual winner was a, a kid by the name of John McDermott. Now, it's not a name that's commonly known today, but before we, we met and uh, um, what's his name? Bobby Jones. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> uh, before those guys. Uh, Some guy. Uh, John McDermott <laughs> uh, came out of nowhere and he was the great American hope. Uh, he, he was one of those young golfers. He had a confrontational attitude. He was kind of uh, one of those cocky young, young, uh, young punks. Yeah. Um, but he he just won and he took home the U.S. Open crown in 1911 after 16 years of dominance from uh, men overseas at the at the uh, at the Open, uh, he brought it back to U.S. soil in 1911, and then he won it again in 1912. Uh, he was 22 years old. Imagine being 22 years old and winning the, Brit- the U.S. Open twice back to back. I mean, that would be. I mean, it's unheard of now. Right, 100 percent. Then is so even more incredible. He uh, he did not threepeat, however, in 1913. Um, he he had some bad investments. He had uh, <laughs> he had some issues. There was a, a stock market crash, and uh, he arrived late to qualify for the 1914 Open Championship. Okay. Uh, another misfortune. It was this um, just misfortune after misfortune yeah. of 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 a, of a kid. And at the time, the the newspapers golf golf was huge. Yeah. I mean, it was one of those sports where these guys were royalty in a sense. They they had this sense of uh, uh, an upper class, right? An, up, yeah. an upper crust right. uh, deal. Right. For sure. Um, so he, he then began to uh, to go into the uh, the qualifying rounds, and he began to kind of rebuild his career because for like a year he didn't play golf. Yeah. And then he started to rebuild his career, and he started going through, uh, and he lost his swing. He completely lost his swing. He completely lost. And, and, and we hear this story all the time. But he just he lost the ability to play golf. Yeah, and he started thinking too much about his swing. He started going to hypnotists and all of these people yeah. back in the day. And he was the phenom. He would have been like, uh, uh, like Jordan Spieth. Jordan like Spieth. Spieth. Yeah. yeah, when Spieth came out yeah. and started winning the Masters every right. every other year. Right. Um, that was that was him. Let's not hope <laughs> Jordan's ha- has, the same, trajectory. has the same fate. <laughs> has the same fate. Right. Um, he even, uh, so it was like one thing after another, he even got on a, on a ship and was heading to a golf tournament because at the time, 1913, right. you, you got, got on a ship. ship. Yeah. I mean, that's some pre-planning there. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, I know. I, have, I can I barely have, pre-plan for a flight. <laughs> you, get, you barely got here on oh, time. Oh, you mean I have to get on a boat? <laughs> so, right. I have to get on a boat a week and a half in advance? Yes. <laughs> so he, uh, he got on a boat and, uh, it, uh, wrecked and he missed, well. he missed another tournament. 
Okay. So this guy just had problem after problem after problem. Right. All these bad things happened to him. And uh, he, he, he basically, it turned him into a stress ball. It turned him into this, uh, this mental, uh, mental case. And I mean that literally. He yeah. was then pushed to the brink uh, by 1916 and was put into a mental institution for 50 years. Really? Honest to God. That's insane. So Literally insane. It is. So he, he uh, for 50 years then, he was in a, a, a mental wow. hospital. Yeah. And I had not heard this story before you sent it to me. Right. But. And, I, and, and it, it's one of those that is that, that in the golf lore, yeah. you don't realize that the first ever U.S. Open uh, champion that was American. Yeah. Then three years later began this downward trajectory yeah. to where it would put him into a mental hosp- hospital for basically the rest of his life. That's, That's a bad deal. Yeah. You know, I've noticed, I've noticed something on this show that I, lately we've yeah. been putting some pretty uh, sad stories at the, at the front end of this. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't know how we... Is it the, I, is I it the overall like, aura of the earth right now? I don't know. I have no idea. <laughs> I mean, there's a pandemic going on. I don't, I mean, I don't but know. This, this guy, he lost all of his money. He uh, got in a shipwreck, um, which is a sentence I never thought I'd say. <laughs> he got in an actual shipwreck. Oh. And then he uh, was moved into a, into a mental, mental hospital uh, for 50 years. And, and he was, uh, his name is John McDermott, yeah. and he was from Philadelphia. And it's a, it's a, it's wild. Frustrating and crushing story. It's super wild. Yeah. I mean, I, I just, I understand how golf could drive you to be That's insane, the point, Mike. But. That's the, that's the, the hook know, at the end. Well, well, golf know. literally yeah. drove him insane. So how do you keep yeah. how do you keep that from happening? How do you keep uh, the insanity down in your in your golf game? <laughs> Is it just the even keel? I just remind myself that it could always be worse. You really? Could, yeah, you could be Adam. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> I couldn't agree couldn't agree more. Um, so let's let's bring in somebody now that is uh, studying the peacefulness of golf and uh, the ability to to not allow golf to take you down a path that puts you either a at the worst case scenario a mental hospital <laughs> or at the uh, best case scenario to to just quit the game. Right. Noah Polipsky is with us, peaceful golfer. Noah, welcome in to the Stick and Hack Show. Hey guys, how's it going? Outstanding, sir. Good to see you. Thanks for uh, taking some time with us here today. So. I got to go through your, your, your story here because it's, it's remarkable. Uh, you started playing golf at four years old, and you were a 20 handicap uh, until about the age of 23. And then you started to take the game seriously, and you started practicing and going to teachers and instructors. And after years of studying the mechanics of the swing and growing frustrated with the results, as we all do, you had a, a, a thought, a light bulb moment, an Oprah aha moment where you said, what if I just don't think about anything when I swing and I just swing and you started hitting a long and straight right down the middle, hitting three flag sticks and a nine hole round of golf. And you then said, uh, were swings thoughts ever really necessary to begin with? And you then started sharing this message with top students uh, around the PGA tour and you were caddied for some of them. You've written a book about your experience titled peaceful golf, uh, journey into the unknown. And you've been featured in golfing world, in the New York times for your unique approach. Now your unique approach uh, oh, by the way, you also share the course record at the oldest public golf course in American. Uh, it's oh, at American Van Cortlandt Park in the Bronx, New York, right? Uh, yeah, it's called uh, Van Cortlandt Park, the oldest, 1895, oldest public golf course in America. And you, uh, you still share the course record there? I do, 63. How often do you check nice. that just to make sure that's still intact? Is that a weekly well, call? Well, I mean, the course is pretty old, so it was, uh, <laughs> no, I, I think it's going to stay intact. It's a tricky little course. Out of bounds on every hole except one. Oh, that's awesome. Night. Yeah. Um, so you you have come to us with this this thought that you don't think when you swing. And it's been talked about and it's been studied, but you have actually instilled it and you teach it. Tell us about it. Sure, well. I mean, again, let's go back to that, that first epiphany, you know, growing up with all those swing thoughts, any, any golfer, where, how are you going to learn? You're going to go and ask someone how you get, how you, uh, how do you play the game? You're going to ask for some simple advice. Well, as soon as you go down that path, you're going to be locked into following, following that religion per se, uh, in that technique. And what I, what I say is as soon as you start to follow that, that one way, you've given up your freedom mentally. And the only way a mind can really learn and discover new things is if it's free. 
So as soon as I lock myself on the stack and tilt, I can only move within that realm of stack and tilt. Whereas if I don't have any approach and I'm willing to have an open mind and look at all the different possibilities, maybe I'll end up with a swing like Matthew Wolf. Maybe I'll end up with Jim Furyk. Maybe I'll look like Tiger. But I've got to find my authentic swing. And I see too many people getting into this cookie cutter pattern of what proper mechanics are. And I'm glad when I see guys like Matt Wolf who say, I'm not going down that path. I'm going to trust my own natural instincts to figure this out. And you can see the results. Under pressure, the guys whose swings are natural, the Bubba Watsons, the Jim Furyk, these guys win majors because those swing, those movements are natural. They've instilled them from an early age. No one tinker with them. No one play with them. Just go online and check out the little kids out there and see those four-year-olds on Instagram who are just crushing balls with perfect mechanics. Now, you know they didn't learn those mechanics from the teacher. They're four years old. You can't get them to sit still for five seconds. Right. So they're learning those because it's a natural, instinctive action if you don't allow thought to get in the way. How did you learn to walk? You learn to walk by not by anyone helping you with language. You're, you don't even speak at that age. So how did you figure out that complex motor skill? It's not that you weren't thinking. Your brain was very alert. You were totally into it, but you weren't using thought in its limited capacity. You know, science has already proven to us that you can only think about something one thing at a time. Well, if I can only think about one thing at a time, the golf swing has hundreds of moving parts that all have to sync together. If I keep breaking it apart, why do you think, why do you think a swing lasts for a, a day and then the next day you come out, it's not there because that sink is just a little bit off. <laughs> that's the question. So I'm sure you guys can Noah, relate to that. Yeah. Oh, well, I know I can. No, that's the question we ask ourselves all the time. Every golfer asks them, themselves, why I can't, how did I forget how to play golf? And, yep. and how did my swing just go away? And how is a swing different from shot to shot, hole to hole in some cases? Now, the, even, even great golfers and, and PGA and LPGA Tour professionals have a bad swing. They, they, they're not perfect every single time. Um, the, so if I'm understanding you correctly, you're saying, and most people think that golf is 80% mental and 20% physical. Uh, and, they, and they use that in different different ways uh, when they're describing it. But you say no. You say that the mental aspect of the game in some cases could be destroying and, and being more of a detriment to a golf golfer than, than anything. No, I'm saying we've got to learn how to use the mind. You know, in, in life, we're, we've been taught what to think, not how to think. Yeah. So we need to recognize that the mind is basically, when we get into that pattern of, going over and over with the swing thought, we're just going in a revolving door. I mean, how many times have you guys, you've all seen the videos, you've all tried things, you know, okay, today I'm going to turn my hips first, or today I'm going to pull down with my left arm. You always have some kind of swing thought you're working on. Yep. How many times does it take for us to recognize that those things go away, and that just like the guy who lost his mind, this is probably why I lost his mind, he had a swing that he couldn't miss with, and then like that, it's gone. And now you're trying to go back to that, and it's not there. You have to find something new. Yep. So what I would say is if we can really understand how the mind is using us, because it tells us to keep going and searching for these things, which we see are a dead end that are just a revolving door of confusion and the same old thing. So what I say is I was just experimenting with one of my students. I said, listen, on every swing, I want you to make a different swing. So on this one, I want you to pull down with your left arm. This one, I want you to turn your head. Whatever you come up with in your arsenal of learning over the years and you can watch the player instantly they can hit all those shots all different times but i can't keep it consistent what's the one thing in life that's guaranteed there is no permanence there is yeah. no there is nothing that stays forever so why are we chasing something that doesn't exist everything in life changes so why don't we have a swing that changes with us i mean jack nicholas's swing isn't nearly what it was but he still plays great golf He's still moving. He's moving in a completely different manner than he was when he was 20 years old. You can go back and watch the yeah. film. But he's allowing his body and his mind to change with his body. I want to walk up on the first tee, and I want to have a swing for that day. I don't want to have a swing that worked yesterday, and now today I went out and had a few too many glasses of wine, and now I can't move the same. <laughs> and now I'm trying to make that swing from yesterday, and it's not working. Right. A lot of this just... So that's where I want to see people using the mind to uncover the fact that the thing they're doing isn't actually progressing them. You know, one of the big things out there is the 10,000 hours of practice. I put the 10,000 in the original. If you're practicing the wrong thing, yeah. 10,000 hours just means you're going to be really good at doing the wrong thing. Right. Yeah. 
Yeah, no, I, you know, you and I, you and I started golf at a young age, around the same age. Um, would you consider that you kind of take the approach uh, to the swing like a child, where you're 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 not really thinking about all of those technical things, and you just kind of let it let it rip? I think I think that's that's really intriguing to me, and it's it's something that I've I personally like. I never thought about it this way until I until Adam sent me your story and I was reading reading your website and going through things and I really honestly a lot of the way I approach the game is a lot of what you're talking about. I've never really thought about it in that way and put the label on it, but I think exactly what you're talking about is something that golfers need to think about the game is not it's not going to be the same all the time. And you have to you have to I've always found when I'm able to focus on a single thing, that is when I'm able to play my best golf because I'm not thinking about all these other 15, 3,000 things in my mind. And, and I've said it to you mm-hmm. before, Adam, is I really, I really think that simplicity in golf is the key to enjoying it more and becoming better and being able to, uh, to really improve yourself over the long haul. Absolutely. I mean, the minute the minute I discovered that I didn't have to think about those swing thoughts during the swing, that it really made no difference in the result. Yeah. I was I was all of a sudden freed up to play golf. Yeah. You know, someone asked me the other day, wasn't that hard? Wasn't it hard to shoot those low numbers, shoot a sixty three? I said, no, it's not hard at all. Those are the easiest days on earth because yeah. everything's going right where you're looking. Yeah. The days that are difficult are when it's not going where you want, and you're fighting your mind mentally searching for a golf swing, trying to find anything to hold it together. And what I'm saying is the reason it's not being held together is because you're putting, you're not putting realistic uh, controls on the golf. You're you're thinking you can do the same thing every single day. I mean, how many times have to watch pros who work on this day and night not make the cut the next week? Yeah, right. That's because the swing's not there how they're, when they're playing at their highest level. Yeah, but so you, I want to I want to get your brain. Go ahead. No, I'm sorry. I, I, it's it's counterintuitive though to what we've all been taught and and all the instructions is out there. All the uh, the YouTube videos and, and Mike and I've had this conversation multiple times that it's almost a detriment to the game in some cases because there's a systematic. This is how you swing the golf club. And you've you've mentioned all the people Bubba who has yeah. never been taught he was self taught Furyk who whose swing is is legendary Matt Wolf who's the latest um, casualty of the you you don't swing right argument yeah. um, and these guys are professional golfers and are doing quite well um, and then you start talking about the older generation and and I've been beaten by more uh, older guys in golf than I can pos- <laughs> that I even want to say out loud I mean it's embarrassing. Um, but the reason is, is because they don't care. They are out there. They're yeah. retired. They're out there playing golf. They're, there's their backswing comes to, you know, three fourths of the weight there. They're still hitting the, the, the ball. Great. They're still chipping and putting, doing the things that, to score. Well, they're just out there enjoying the game. They are having peaceful golf. And I think that's where that word is super important in your story is that there is a piece there of your mind. There's a piece of the enjoyment of, of, of the game and you are trying to bring more enjoyment to not just professional athletes, but to all kinds of golfers. So they could just go out there, swing free, play the game and then leave. Is that about right? Yeah. Well, I mean, look, look at the, look at someone like Mike, Mike, you've adopted certain principles on how the golf swing should work. Yeah. So it's much harder for the accomplished player to let go of those ideas. That's why peaceful golf sometimes yeah. with a good player is very difficult to accept unless they're really struggling. Yep. Then they're looking for anything and they'll listen. But the, the beginner has no concept. He's an open, he's an open mind to what you tell him. So if I explain to them, listen, I don't want you to get locked down into these, into these patterns. I want you to start to feel what your swing is going to feel like. Yeah. You're going to develop into a really great player. So what I see across the board is I just see in instruction, it's gotten so out of whack with the technical aspect. And the problem with that is if we go jump into another sport like baseball, you see all these kit from, from mine, from the little league to the pros, there's an epidemic right now of Tommy John. Yeah. Well, why is that happening? Back in the early 1900s, guys were throwing three games in a row and 20 inning games, their arms <laughs> yeah. weren't, yeah. weren't having these problems. What happened? What happened was we got more technical. We started getting slow motion video. We started getting mechanics involved. 
and saying, these are the perfect mechanics. And the problem is, yes, they may be perfect and they may give you two miles an hour faster, but the detriment to the body, because not everyone is designed to move in those perfect forms. Yep. So we, we can't follow that. We can just see that this is leading to a road. Thought is great for building a computer. It's not great for building a golf swing. Yeah. That's, that's what I've seen. We have to understand how to use thought, and we're not doing that. Yeah. We're just applying the same principles to everything we learn. And imagine learning how to ride a bicycle by mechanics. Me saying, okay, your left <laughs> right. foot is going to come up at 10 <laughs> degrees. And you, it's preposterous. Yeah. Like, yeah. That's not how you learn. Yeah, I, you, you learn by putting the kid on the bike and just pushing it and going, well, I don't know what to tell you. Yeah. Figure it out. That's right. Uh, the, That's right. I think what we, we've had a lot of guests on this show um, talking about the, the mental game uh, of golf. Uh, Dr. Rob Bell, Dr. Chelsea Day, uh, you, Noah. Um, I'm going to put doctor in front of your name just because that seems to be the, the <laughs> progression here. Uh, but uh, and it's the, it's so it's so important that people understand that there is the mental side of the game. There is the breaking down uh, the mental part of, of what you don't think about what you do think about, how you forget holes, how, you, how you're supposed to be one shot at a time. It's just so damn difficult to get out of your own head. For me, as a, as a mid-handicapper, as a hack, yeah. I, I, it's, it's probably the, the, the roughest part of the game except for my chipping, putting, and mid-irons. It is, the, <laughs> it is the, the, the most difficult part of my game is to get out of my, out of my head. What is that that secret? I know there's no secret. If there if there was, then then we'd be fine. But what is that secret in your life, Noah, where you can say, "Here's how you can go in with a clear head and just swing natural and let your body do what it's supposed to do to play your best game." So forcing the mind quiet doesn't work. As soon as you try to force it to be quiet, you're in contradiction with yourself, and now you're in now you're in a whole other struggle. So what I've found for myself is when I ask myself questions. When I say to myself, what happens if I don't think about these swing thoughts? Well, then it's posed in a question, and then I can go and see if I'm capable of doing that. You'll see immediately you're capable of standing up there with no thought in your head and swinging the golf club. It's just a matter. You don't have to force anything once you, once you engage yourself in the question and answer. And I don't think we do that. I think we say, okay, he told me not to do this, so I'm not going to do that. That's not the, you have to. This is a path of self-discovery. So you want to get on your own path and figure this out. Now, what I will say about using the mind we can use the mind in golf for our training. So, for instance, like I see so many people go to the range and they just start hitting ball after ball after ball trying to get to a rhythm. Then they finally do. And they're like, look, I'm crushing my 7-iron 165 every time. I'm like, yeah, but it took you 12 or 15 shots to get there. How do you play golf? Golf is one shot at a time. So are you actually preparing yourself to play golf? Or are you just out there swinging a golf club when it feels good? That's great. But that's not what you get on the golf club. So what I propose is there was a great YouTube video about a guy that was talking about the 10,000 hours to become a master at something. Well, a lot of us don't have 10,000 hours to become a master. Uh, Mike, you know how long this took right. to become a good golfer. <laughs> yeah. But if, I, if, I'm a, if I'm a hack like Adam and I want to get better, how can I maximize my time? What's the amount of time it would take for me to get significantly better? Well, it turns out the answer is 20 hours. So 20 hours – if you break down the elements of the most important things required in the golf swing, you come to a very few specific things that you need to learn to do to play decent golf. And if you can study on those things instead of getting wrapped up in the 60-yard flop shot, which you guys don't need, stick to the very basics. And then when you go out to the range, you really go and you – what I like to do is I don't like to give the brain a chance to rest. I want you to always be learning. So the way we can learn is if I say, okay – get up there and hit a draw and you take a swing and it doesn't draw. I said, that was your one chance. Now let me see you hit a fade. Now let me see you hit it high. Now you let me see you hit it low. And what you'll start to see is the brain will be able to learn how to do that on the first try, not the 10th try. So you get, so you build up that confidence. That confidence is so important in the golf swing. When you're standing over a hole where you see the water and you need to hit a shot, that's not comfortable. Those are so hard to, get over but if you've been on the range and you know that hey man nine out of ten times i can hit the shot that i'm required to hit huge confidence builder i think that i think maximizing the way we practice is so important because just going out there and hitting balls you're not improving he said practice mike we're talking about practice practice <laughs> no it's it's great i mean so noah with that in mind what and, and you're talking about 
uh, how you teach players, what do you enjoy more, uh, studying the behavior of golfers or actually playing golf? Uh, for me, it's all about playing golf. I became hooked on the game. I, when I was uh, younger, in my 20s, I was on a Broadway show. I was a prop master for a Broadway show that traveled the country. And so during the day, I had nothing to do, and that's when I started taking golf seriously because all my time was free. Right. And I just started playing golf every day and really got to see all the different design aspects of the game and just fell in love with the game of golf. So for me, it's about playing. I'm an artist. You know, I do artwork, I'm, I, and I see golf as an art. So for me, yeah. it's like my the stick is a paintbrush and the course is a canvas, and I love seeing new courses all the time. I don't lock into one specific course. Yeah. I love seeing how the course can be approached in different ways when you uh when no when you have somebody uh that's in your in your uh class or that you're instructing or that you're just talking to or anybody listening here to the stick and hack show uh what what gives you the most enjoyment uh about hearing the aftermath of hi- of them listening to your advice so let's say today we play golf mike and and i i take noah's advice and i just say let's just clear the mind and let's just let the let the body be free and and just do the things that i already know how to do i've been playing the golf the game for 25 years i know how to do this uh, and just let it happen. Uh, what's the best thing for you, Noah, to hear a student or a, a, somebody that's read your book or been involved in, with you at some point say to you where you go, okay, they get it. That worked. When I hear them talk about, when I hear them say, I feel free. You know, for me, it's, it, it was always about control and always trying to make the body and brain do something. And now it's all of a sudden they're saying, wow, I just hit that. I don't know how I did that. I don't know how I just hit that 240 yard drive, but it just happened. And I'm like, yeah, isn't it better to be able to hit the shot? You don't need to know how it works. I don't need to know how my legs work to walk, but I do it every day and I'm happy I can, but I don't study the mechanics of how my, how my body moves to make that locomotion happen. So once they free up their minds and they start talking about freedom and how easy they feel inside mentally and physically, I mean, that's, that's the key to me. I mean, as soon as you start letting go, the first thing that happens are your muscles start to relax yep. because all the, all of you, tr- your thoughts have always been telling you to do something which fires muscles, which engages the muscles. You look at, look at, take a look at uh, VJ Singh. I mean, that is one of the most relaxed yeah. golf swings, creates power, consistency. That's what you want to feel in your body. I mean, I remember, yeah. I remember um, Sam Snead, they asked him how, how, what's his grip pressure like? He said, it's like holding a baby bird. Yeah. So I'll ask you guys. I mean, uh, Adam, are you holding that club like a baby bird? No idea. Absolutely no idea. <laughs> <laughs> take a look. Take a look, and if I'll he see. Is, I the guarantee you're dead. playing with thoughts, <laughs> strangling. It. Yeah, exactly. No, I don't think I am. Uh, and and I would I would be hesitant to to tell you that I'm doing from a mechanic standpoint. There's a couple things that I that I know I do very well, and that I that my setup and all that stuff is is right. But uh, yeah, I I don't. I don't know, um, and I try not to think about it. Well, again, there let's let's question let's question the let's question the alignment as well. Like you all, you have to question all of this because you look at a guy like Freddie Couples or a guy like yeah. Dean Trevino. These guys aim thirty degrees to the left when they play it, yeah, and they can hit the ball both ways. They could do all kinds of things. Yeah. So even alignment, I question. I question all of it. I think you're going to see golfers like Matthew Wolf that come along that are so athletic that move in such a different way that are just going to challenge all the norms of how golf is being taught. Yeah. Yeah. Noah, um, you talked a little bit about being an artist and, uh, you know, the, the course is your canvas and, uh, you love seeing new layouts and you also do, you rate golf courses. Um, what, what are the things that you love about golf courses and what do you consider, uh, the aspects of a course that make it a top 50 course. And, and for those that don't know, Noah, explain what a golf rater is, golf yeah. course rater is. Yeah. Good yeah. Point. So most of the major golf publications have um, a panel of, of raters, golfers who vary in handicaps, but have a love for architecture. Uh, we all go out there and we play these golf courses and we fill out questionnaires basically about the architecture and we compare those against the other people that have rated it and we come to a basically a, a universal rating for that course. Um, a lot of the time, the cream rises to the top, obviously, with design. But I've also started to look at, you know, staying away from just the architecture, which is great. There's, that's a great thing, too. But I also look at the whole experience. You know, one of the things for me that 
uh, of course, it blew my mind. The reason I started my blog, you guys, look, I have a top 100 blog as well, my own courses that I picked. Yeah. Um, well, the, the first course I did was a course called Torshavon Golf Club in the Faroe Islands, the little chain of islands in the, in the North Atlantic. And these guys created a nine-hole golf course up there out of, on the side of the ocean, out of mud and rocks. And these guys playing full flickers and rain boots. <laughs> and they, they have, they, they, the ball get lost, gets lost on almost every single shot you hit. That's so awesome. they have markers. They have ways to play. I played around with these guys. And the closest golf ball is a 10-hour boat ride. So, I mean, to see the love of golf and these guys out there playing in just downpours with nothing semblance of a normal golf course, to me, that I mean, you take a look on my website, check it out. It's, it's remarkable. And so something like that, where people yeah. are that passionate about a game that they're not even – Near, they're almost not even playing it. It's so such a different experience. That to me makes makes a great golf course. Yeah. It's, the, it's the whole experience. Right. Well, Adam, I now want to see you play golf in slickers. <laughs> I, I like. I, I want to see you out there. I want you. I want you to look like the Gordon's fisherman. I love it. I think. <laughs> I think that's the only way. That's a free mind right there. That's a free spirit. Uh, no, no doubt about it. Um, all right. Last question for you, Noah. Um, and we're with Noah Plipsky here, uh, Peaceful Golf, and. Uh, talking about freeing the mind and, and playing playing the game really as, as freely as you possibly can uh, yeah. to better your score. What is the advice, and, and I know most of the show has been about that, but is there a single piece or, or a takeaway for a 20 handicap or above that instantly, now you're not going to guarantee that they're going to um, save five strokes around or something like that, but just to enjoy the experience more of being a 20 handicapper or, or being a, 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 a true hack, what is the advice you would give them to enjoy that experience of golf like you have for many, for many, many years? Well, you know, for me, golf is really about the connections I make. So, you know, getting, getting locked up in your golf swing, one of the great things about peaceful golf, like I said to you guys, once your mind is free, you can then play golf. And part of playing golf is engaging with the other guys that are with you. And that's just, uh, if I'm wrapped up in swing thoughts, I'm just wrapped up in myself. I, I don't even know why I'm out there at that point. It just becomes so frustrating. It's better to have that conversation with a guy. I like to have this conversation I'm having with you guys a lot of times with the guys, of course, because they're not playing that well. Right. And I start to say, well, here's why you're not playing well. And so we start to get into that. For a 20 handicapper, I see it the same as a, as a scratch player. I mean, it's about how we're looking at the game. If you're locked into one system, I, God bless you. I hope that system doesn't fail. Because I've seen that they all do. I mean, you can yeah. see it through every right. pro player out there. Every instructor has been cast aside onto the next one. So I just think for the 20 handicapper, proper practice. I think that's really dedicated um, practice that is working towards playing golf, not just going out and hitting balls. That's the quickest way to improve. I have a bunch of videos on my, on my website as well, peacefulgolf.com, where I give really quick little hacks. Um, like for instance, the 20 handicapper, one thing I see that's a huge problem for them is in the rough, right on the edge of the green where they've got to hit a chip shot or what do they do there? And the simplest solution, if you're in the, in the rough and you're downhill on a green, you can putt right out of that. Yeah. It'll just putt right out like you're on, like you're on a flat surface. And I demonstrate that on there with a bunch of shots. That's a very simple hack that just cut. You're not going to hit that, that flop shot out of the rough with the, for the right. 20 handicapper is really difficult. Right. So I got little simple hacks for them. They don't require any thought. I'm not, I'm not, you guys check them out. I think you'll be pretty in, in, intrigued by yeah. them. I'm not giving you technique. I'm giving you approaches, little simple hacks to get through the game. And, I love it. And that is one of the things that uh, I think most people forget is that that connection. Uh, yeah. and, and you hit on something that Mike and I are trying to do here with Stick and Hack, connect people across the world to the game of golf in the most uh, relaxed and, um, enjoyable fashion and not to get wrapped up in, in the whole thing. Just go play, yeah. meet a friend, have, have a, have an experience and then you go home or then you go to work or then you do whatever it is that you do. Right. Uh, it is, it's not the end of the world. We're not out here trying to, to make millions of dollars. And even for those that are making millions of dollars that it can, it, that, that advice could, could help as well. I mean, what happened if, uh, what happened if you went out and played today and didn't think about the score, you just went out and played golf right. and forgot about the score. You know, a lot of times the score puts a lot of undue pressure on us. Yeah. yeah. Some of my best rounds have been when I wasn't even thinking about a score. I got done and I was like, wow, I didn't even realize I shot that score. Yeah. So I think a lot of times, like I said, <laughs> I've done that, but reversed. Mind, 
<laughs> Holy <laughs> shit. What the hell happened? <laughs> I didn't, how long have I been out here? Uh, Noah Polipsky is the guest. Uh, Peaceful-golf.com is the website uh, to learn more about Noah. Uh, and you have your books for sale there as well. Uh, oh, look at that shirt. That's yep. fantastic. Uh, look at our shirt. Noah, we'll do this all day. We got stuff too, baby. We got merch too, okay? Love it. Uh, peaceful Golf. Noah, it's a, a, an absolute thrill to talk to you. You're a great uh, great conversation, and uh, hopefully we uh, can get out there and play sometime. It would be, be great to meet you and uh, have you more involved with Stick and Hack. And a new member to Stick and Hack, by the That's way, right. is, uh, is Noah. So uh, uh, hopefully you enjoy the spoils that, that uh, you'll get now as a member <laughs> of the greatest golf club in the world without the course. I love it, guys. Thanks so much for having me on. This was uh, this was awesome. Glad you guys had an open mind to be able to listen to this kind of conversation. Great. Absolutely. It's what we do. Thank you, Noah. There he goes. Noah Thanks, Polipsky, Noah. Uh, peaceful-golf.com is the website, and uh, we welcome uh, your, your feedback and thoughts, too, as members and listeners uh, on that approach because it's fantastic, and it is yeah. something that we're trying to, to build and, and, and understand people that golf is, is, is hard enough. Don't make it harder. Yeah. Just go out, enjoy it, and then, and then move on with your day. Yeah, I, I love his approach, and like I said during the interview, I hadn't really thought about that approach, but that is kind of the approach I take to right, golf right. and I've never, but I've never really put in kind of that, put that label on it. Yeah. Um, but, um, I, I think it's such a, uh, it's a, such a different way of thinking about the game that I think if people did that more often that they would see much, uh, better results in their game. And I think they would enjoy the game, but Which make more. no mistake about it, Mike, it is the toughest thing to do. It is. I, agree. I mean, it's I, not, it's not as, as easy. It's, I just don't think it's about not, it. It's okay. not, it's not, uh, it, I mean, it's let me not, not think about thinking about it. Yeah. It's not, that's, it's not that simple, but what he's talking about is making the game simpler mm -hmm. and not trying to think about too many things at once and trying to keep it to the simplest of things in your mind so that you are not, you're not thinking about the swing so much. So this is the third guest that's talked about the mental game of golf, and they've all really given the same advice, just in different ways and in, in different practices. And and so yeah. I think I think that is that is super cool that everyone is is still feeling that that way, and that it's not about yeah. the mechanics, it's not about those other things. So yeah. uh, it's very cool. So Noah, yeah. Noah, we appreciate your time uh, on the on the Stick and Act show. Yeah. All right, we move into the clubhouse now. This is uh, the game portion. Uh, for those of you that enjoy this last segment, this is a good one because this is going to uh, this is going to test my ability. Um, and my <laughs> hack ability at the highest level. So here's what we're going to do. Okay. There are 10 golfers in the world right now that are in the rankings one through 10. Okay. Okay. And I'm going to see if I can get you to guess. Now you might, you probably, you probably know the, the top 20 or so, right? So this isn't coming out of left field, not in order, but, but yeah. uh, I have to get you to guess the golfer in uh -huh. the top 10 okay. with uh, you remember uh, like a heads up, you know, on your phone it's or like a, um, okay. um, what's yeah. it called? Uh, uh, password. Sure. From the 1960s, if yeah. I can use a reference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, from 40 years ago. $10,000 pyramid. <laughs> yeah, there we go. There All we right, go. here we go. So this go. Uh, this is the game, okay? Okay. Uh, and as many, uh, and I can't say rhyming or sounds like or any of that crap, okay? Okay. So, um, blank Mac. Blank Mac. Mm-hmm. Blank boy. Blank boy. <laughs> this is good. What? I you have to think of the golfer. I know. Okay. I'm trying. So blank boy. What's the first name? The movie blank boy. Water boy. No. Yeah. The, the golfer's name water. Tommy. Oh, Tommy boy. Uh, okay. Tommy Fleetwood. There we go. There we go. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> All right. Let's try this one. Okay. <laughs> Spider. Man. Nope. <laughs> what do they? What do they? What's the? What do they use? How do they live? Spider putter. What? No. On a wall. Okay, but what is the, the, the stuff that comes out of their, their hands? Their hands, the spider hands. Web. Web? Oh, oh Web Simpson. God. Okay, there we go. All right. All right. Here, uh, oh, man. Uh, You're not very good at this. No, I'm not. not. I no, don't I don't. I think, I don't it's, I think it's probably both of us. Uh, jerk. Jerk? Yeah. Chicken? Cr Crybaby. Uh, Cheater. Oh, Patrick Reed. There we go. Yeah. There he is. There we go. Uh, Australian. Top 10, Australian. Uh, What's my name? Adam Scott. There we go. There we go. Um, Gretzky. Uh, Dustin Johnson. There. That was a simple yeah. one. Uh, Irish. Uh, Rory. Nice. There we go. Very good. Um, 
Uh, hold on here. Let me think about this. Oh, you're uh, you're, you have one of your names. <laughs> what one of your Justin names? Thomas? There we go. There we go. Nice. Uh, and then um, they're tennis shoes. Not Converse, not Nike, not Adidas. The running shoes. What? Brooks. <laughs> I would never. <laughs> no kidding. I don't run. Brooks. <laughs> <laughs> Brooks Kepka. Not a not a runner. We're really good at that, man. Well, you know. That was really fun. Yeah, it was exciting. <laughs> Engaged my mind. Uh, did it? Because it didn't look like it. <laughs> It looked like you were peaceful, I buddy. Was. I was very peaceful. That's the Stick and Act show. Thanks to uh, Noah Polipsky. Uh, thanks to uh, you for listening to the most sophisticated golf show in the free world. Mike, great show. Thank you so much. Proud of you, buddy. Thanks, buddy. It's good to see you again. You too, always. And uh, we'll see you guys in a couple weeks. Thanks for listening. All right, peace out, guys. The Stick and Hack show is now over. Subscribe, rate, comment, and tell your friends. You are now free to go about your day.